Now, welcome to another edition of News from Naboo, a weekend ramble edition. Weekend. <laughs> All right. And what is our topic this week, or what do you got for us? All right. So we're actually going to talk about, um, well, I'll just, I'll just tell you the title. Okay. Doctor Strange 2 writer teases progress on Kevin Feige's Star Wars movie. Ooh. Oh, he's still making that. It's been like two or three years since we heard now, anything about that. But now they've said the word progress. Progress. That could mean anything. When, when you've gone from nothing... <laughs> Like writing Star Wars at the top of a piece of paper and beginning your script is progress, right? But anyway, I, I, I kid, I kid. Let's let's hear what uh, you have to say. Thank you. So Michael Waldron has been very busy with projects like Loki and Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness and working on the Kevin Feige head Star Wars movie project. He was doing a post-release interview, like, you know, making his rounds from Doctor Strange. Tour, sure. Yep. Yeah. So he interviewed with Variety, where he addresses where things stand with the movie. We're finally into it in earnest. I mean, writing anyway. It's a lot of fun. I'm enjoying having the freedom on that to do something that's not necessarily a sequel or anything. It maybe has a little bit less of a... It just doesn't have a bunch of TV shows and movies that you're servicing on top of it the way I did with Doctor Strange. So it's nice. We have no idea what this movie will be, but uh, it's nice to have confirmation, I guess, that it's being worked on. And with this quote, there's now a little room for speculation. Ramble on, Thor. <laughs> well, I, I can't help but notice he kind of said the exact opposite of what uh, Dave Filoni recently said in the Book of Boba Fett from Disney, the Disney Gallery Book of Boba Fett, how he talks about Star Wars is like one big story and the fans mm -hmm. like their continuity. And, I mean... I get what he's trying to say here. I'm not going to try to, you know, take this completely and twist his words. I, I understand what he's saying. Like, he, you know, he's coming off of Doctor Strange, which is and Loki, a very, yeah. yeah, he's coming off of a very linear story where we have one piece of the MCU after another after another. So, you know, he has to take into account everything that has directly happened before. And with Star Wars, not everything is going to be, you know, interconnected. If you're making a, a movie set in one time period, you don't necessarily have to worry about everything that happened in the prequel. So I get what he's trying to say. Yet at the same time, it is a little disconcerting to hear that, you know, like with the words like freedom and like complete freedom and I don't have to worry about all these series. I mean, to yeah, me, that implies he, yeah. a movie set completely out of anything else. That is what it sounds like to have the freedom to work to do something that's not necessarily a sequel or anything. It doesn't have a bunch of TV shows and movies you're servicing. Yeah, so he, he's basically saying this isn't going to be attached to anything we know, which. You know, the other day I talked in a video about, you know, what should the future look like? And I said, let's let's move 500 years, 1,000 years. Let, let's move into the future and create a, a whole kind of different time period. Now, perhaps that's what they're going to turn this into. I'm going to assume it's not. And I mean, also in that same video, I talked about, you know, what is the point of kind of these one... Not that you can't... They can't be good and enjoyable in mm -hmm. and of themselves. But what kind of is the point of making like this one-off film in the middle of nowhere that has very little to do with anything else Star Wars. I mean, is that still Star Wars? Just because you're set in the, you know, the same galaxy and you're in some distant part and, you know, is, is that still like a Star Wars movie? Or does the Star Wars movie have to have Jedi and Sith or bounty hunters and attachment to the, you know, the Republic or the Empire? You know, does it have to have, you know, familiar elements before it actually is Star Wars? Or is that just something else just kind of set in Star Wars to use the name? I mean, if they did something like a bounty hunter story, they could get away with not having to worry about connecting it with much. Sure. I mean, just saying, yes, this takes place during I mean, this time period is enough. I guess I would ask, like, what is... And again, not that it can't be good. I'm not saying it's automatically going to be bad. But what is the point of just taking, like, random character, random part of the galaxy that has nothing else to do with Star Wars and just telling a story? At that point, you could set it in a brand new galaxy, right? Why would you... I mean, I think what I'm trying to say is... I worry that you're just trying to use the Star Wars name to kind of lure people in and you're just telling your own story. I mean, we could argue that's a little <laughs> bit what Ryan Johnson did, right? He kind of didn't really want to beholden himself to the movie before. He didn't want to beholden himself to everything and kind of made his own little movie in between. You can love that movie. I'm not saying it's bad because of that in and of itself again, but it certainly kind of feels a little separate from a lot of things, right? Absolutely. So if you're now going to take a movie that doesn't have anything to do with anything we've really seen before and just make this one-off, again, what's kind of the point? It's just a very weird thing to say out of someone who's been working with Kevin Feige. Yeah. Who's I know, been Kevin working Feige. in the MCU 
who knows that these are huge interconnected things to go, oh, I'm going to Star Wars where what, nothing's connected? (laughs) I mean, maybe that's just a slight against Lucasfilm and the way they've been handled. I don't think so. Or could it possibly be that does this writer not know much about Star Wars? At which point, Do they go, there's there's X many movies and that's it? I don't know. I think he's, like I said, I'm not, I'm trying to put myself into what I think he's saying because I think, like I said, I think he's just saying, well, at least I don't have to make a movie that takes, you know, this little thing into account from here and this little thing into account here. I'm making something that's a little more, you know, standalone-ish. But even still, so you a movie would about Brew going to the store? I'd still watch it, but... <laughs> <laughs> but no, but seriously, I mean, it, it's a, it's an interesting statement because, I mean... Filoni, it contradicts what we know, what we think we know about Star Wars? Well, yeah, I think, well, Filoni nailed it when, you know, people want the connectivity. You know, I might every now and then gripe about, oh, you're using the same, oh, this character has to show up here. But, you know, you know that's just kind of one of the things of Star Wars. It's kind of one of the charms of Star Wars. That it is the story of, and you, you constantly do want to add new characters, new things, mm-hmm. new plays. You, you, sure. But you want to kind of have this, you know, this familiar feeling out of the stories right you do want to see these characters right. come back from time to time even though there are you know a trillion to the trillionth power beings in the star wars galaxy and you're like why do these five people keep showing up that's just kind of the you know again that's one of the charms it's one of the things you have to accept about star wars what's funny is the mcu consists of movies and t in disney plus shows strictly they're going into star wars land where we've got movies tv shows old car <laughs> you know, older cartoon shows yeah books and comics and video games good luck (laughs) if you're worried about connectivity star wars has every moment of the timeline mapped out so what do you think you're going to be avoiding some research that i think has to happen to do star wars absolutely i mean i i think you absolutely have to know your stuff because fans like myself are are going to call you out and that doesn't mean i'm going to do it in a mean way oh your movie sucked because you've got this one little detail and that's you know, I kind of talked about it in a video the other day. Like, sometimes I nitpick because I, I enjoy dissecting Star Wars. Not because I'm trying to attack this, you know, this mm-hmm. writer personally. It's because I, I care that that damn much about Star Wars. And I want to see it be consistent. I want the continuity is important to me as someone who wants to immerse himself into a, you know, a fictional galaxy that feels real. He'll write the first draft, hand it off to the story group. The story group will hand it back with a giant erasers and red pens going, What are you doing? <laughs> I you mean, can't do this. Well, I, I think the story group, and I've said before, I think they have, you know, they have limited power. They don't have unlimited power to overwrite anybody and everybody. Power. I think they basically try to give suggestions, especially when it comes to the films. I think they give suggestions. But if suggestions. it's anything universe-breaking, it will never, ever make it past. It, well, I mean, we have no. the Holdo maneuver. We have other things that I would argue are kind of things that I might have been like, eh, that, you know, maybe not universe-breaking, but you're going to open up a can of worms with this. So maybe take it out or do something different. But yeah, I, I do think this kind of, you know, it, it just gives the wrong kind of vibe because I do believe Star Wars is supposed to be this, mm-hmm. you know, there's supposed to be familiarity. Unless you're going, like I said, unless you're going 500 years or 1,000 years in the future and you're kind of going to start a new time Right, because you frame. can kind of gloss over events that happen in the past yeah, just by briefly mentioning them without... Sure. And even if they did move into the future, you would still want, you know, you'd still want the Jedi and maybe a, a different version of the Sith or a different version of the. You'd still want that mm-hmm. familiarity. Otherwise, it's, you know, it's not Star Wars. It's just a different story, quote unquote, set in the Star Wars universe that is not really Star Wars. So, I mean, I was super, super excited to hear that, hey, they're actually starting writing it. We've got confirmation that a movie is being written. Yeah. Hooray! Well, we have rather Rogue than just seven hundred yeah. directors being attached to seven hundred different projects. Well, I mean, it's also odd because Bob Iger, you know, a couple of years back, did say that they wanted crossover. I mean, I assume they wanted to kind of go the Marvel route, where the series would tie into the movies, perhaps, or you could see characters crossing over. So it is strange to, I mean, I would say the most successful thing that Disney, you know, maybe not monetarily, but the most successful in terms of fan wise and just popularity that they've done have been the series, right? The Mandalorian season one and two. Very widely beloved. Now, it doesn't make the same money as the movies, but you would think they would want to embrace what is working for them and kind of build off that even in another movie that they would have some connecting tissue between maybe mm-hmm. the Mando, quote unquote, Mandoverse and a new movie instead of let's just go do this one shot, you know, that just is called Star Wars. Right. I mean, it felt weird in the first place hearing Kevin Feige was going to do a Star Wars project because he's so well known for Marvel work. Yeah, and I mean, he's he's a huge Star Wars fan as well, so there is that. It's not that I doubt Kevin Feige's ability to do a Star Wars. I mean, I'm 
he, he look what he's done with Marvel. If he's a fan of Star Wars too, I, I have a lot of confidence in what he could bring to it. But strange that the, it's just like this feels like this one-off movie. I don't know. We know nothing else about it other than what he said. So true. All right. Well, I guess that's all we got for you this time. So take to the comments below. Tell us what you think of these comments and tell us what you think. I mean, what makes Star Wars? Is it just the galaxy? Do you just got to be set in the galaxy? Or do you have to have some kind of connecting tissue to everything else we know about Star Wars? Whatever the case may be, do leave your comments below. Let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.